The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. The beer of the week is Lagunitas Brewing Company's Cappuccino Stout. Brewed with boatloads of roasted coffee in each batch for that extra crunk, this Mondo Coffee Stout will leave you wondering whether you're coming or going. With a 9.1 ABV and a 29.50 IBU, this is the kind of beer everybody needs to get their hands on. And on this episode of MMA to the Max, we're going to be previewing UFC 220 this Saturday, as well as Bellator 192 Rampage vs. Sonnen? Stay tuned. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 27 of MMA to the Max. I am your host, Robert Taylor, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Joseph Hudson, a.k.a. Riverside Joe. How are you doing this fine evening, Joe? I am doing phenomenal on this Saturday evening. A uh, long day for me. Did did some work out in the field this morning, which is my usual place to be. But uh, I'm good, buddy. You? I'm doing all right. I took a nap after work, so I am not close to passing out yet. So I'm able to enjoy <laughs> this delicious stout. Uh, I want to so, give yeah, a quick this... shout out to uh, uh, Blake Stevenson and yeah. Derek Bow recently turning me on some new flavors uh, of stout. So shout out to you guys. Appreciate it. And uh, definitely be checking all the names out you've given me. Yeah, it's good to mix it up every now and again. We're definitely big IPA drinkers, but stouts are good, porters are good, and you got to find your way around it. But yeah, dude, we've been stuck on IPAs for two or three years now. <laughs> it's been a long time, it's, yeah. Seriously, I used to drink a lot of stout, a lot of oatmeal and chocolates, and started getting into porters for a little bit and while drinking IPAs, and then I found that green flash um Imperial IPA or West Coast IPA. Oh, but it sounds like what you got there is a nice bitter one too. In this, uh, was it 109 IBUs, nine percent alcohol? You're gonna be all right. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's nice. It's toasty. I can you know I can feel the toasting or taste the toastiness in it. The roast as the you know I guess the uh, the roast coffee. You can definitely the taste the roast flavor. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, but. It's a good beer, man. I was at BevMo searching everywhere, and I didn't have it, so that was kind of obnoxious as all hell. It's all right. Next week, we got uh, some uh, epic brewing Big Bad Baptista for us to uh, enjoy yeah, 220 I'm with. looking forward. But, uh, and we can also enjoy it in our brand new uh, stout glasses that I picked up from Total Wine and & More. And, uh, oh. Yeah, I'm going to be bringing you a couple, buddy, because it was a four-pack. Oh, you're... You're a sweetheart, you know that? I, I don't care what your fiancé says about you. You're a decent person. Ah, sorry about that. Just taking a sip, but uh, it's funny you said that. I don't really care what she thinks about me either. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal relationship, you guys. Yeah, that's how it works. So, yeah, dude. Yeah. I guess uh, some... most people might have noticed uh, in, the, in the opening there about the uh, the beer of the week, the little, the little uh, I forgot the word I'm right now I'm thinking of but the way I pronounced uh, Rampage versus Sonnen did it with a little question and uh, sounded but, like you were from Australia Mike <laughs> yeah. everything they sound is like to ask in a question yeah. it's the uh, it's the dialect I think I think the, the dialect's end, the word I'm talking about the the dialect I use I, I don't think that's right but anyways that's not right either but it is a question worth asking um, you know why is, is Rampage Bellator... Sonnen the main event over Douglas Lima Roy McDonald the their welterweight title it's the title fight it's the title fight of the heavier weight. Yeah, but no, it's not even a title fight. It's the beginning of the Grand Prix. That's what I'm saying, and it's not a five rounder, right? They don't do five round main event, so it's a three rounder. It is a three rounder. Yep. So you're gonna go from a five rounder to a three rounder, 
I don't think I don't think Rory. Well, I think if Rory wins, it doesn't go all five. I think. Um, but either way, man, that just seems anticlimactic. It seems like again, they are opting to sell the 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 spectacle over the skill. Yeah, well, that yeah, I mean, that's what Bellator's been known for. Um, it has bring brought them numbers, but I mean, just the fact that. Uh, Rampage and Sonnen were going to be on the card was going to bring viewers in anyways. It didn't matter if they were opening the main card or not. So Yeah, did you think that if they were the co-main event that people would turn away and miss out on Rory McDonald? You're paying him boatloads of cash. You've got a champion who is making good money too. Why, why aren't you marketing them? That, I mean, that is, that's why I'm watching it. And I'm excited to see you know Rampage versus Sonnen. Sure, that'll be a fun fight. I mean, but granted, I'm really going to be watching excited. it Sunday, but... <laughs> yeah. But either I mean, way, I'm still excited to to watch those fights. But I don't know, man. I think they're underselling Roy McDonald's marketability. Yeah, well, they're hoping the names of Rampage and Shell Sun are what drives people in. I get it, but you know, title fights have always got to go on last, and especially because this is a stacked card. I don't know if you checked it out. And I'm sure you had. But uh, oh yeah, aside from the the aforementioned Jackson Sun and uh, Lima McDonald, I mean, Michael Chandler is back in action. Yeah, Aaron Pico is back in action. Uh, going for uh, win number two, and it's man, I, I, I just don't like the idea that they scheduled up against two twenty. Now I know this was probably scheduled way further in advance than two twenty. Um, I mean that's Miocic versus Nganu, and Nganu's making like less than a two month turnaround. So there's no way yeah. they knew that's what they were going to be going up against. No, they had they've had this in the works for quite some time. Ryan McDonald was talking about this back in November, if not before then. So they didn't know what the UFC's dates were at that point. I don't, I'm sure the UFC knew, but Bellator didn't. And, and they're going up against a heavyweight title fight in the UFC. So we'll see who, who gets more eyes. I think Bellator being on free TV may get more eyes. Uh, I mean, I just... It all depends. Basically, it depends on how much of the uh, fans' imagination that Ngannou captured after this last uh, victory, his you know his fight against Overeem. I mean, if 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 yeah. the hype that they're pushing behind him, as well as capitalizing off that type of knockout in a co-main event, then if they don't get enough, you know, I, I personally I I think it's a failure if they get if they don't get more than three hundred thousand uh, buys. Correct, I would agree. Yeah, because as much as I love Stipe, you love Stipe. Everybody loves Stipe. He's not a draw. Oh, yeah. He's not because he's not a he's not a attention grabber for the casuals. He's definitely the hardcore. Love him. We like him. He's a phenomenal, fun guy to watch. We actually like his demeanor because he's not too flashy. He's a martial artist, but the casuals don't get on board. Yeah, and it's a it's it, it's a shame. Um, you know, unless like a Ronda Rousey or a GSP or a. Uh, Conor McGregor fighting, uh, the casuals don't care. Um, yep. I mean, I'm I want the casuals to watch because you, they, those are the one those are the people that you convert into the hardcore fans. So we need them. Let's not try to push them away. But it would be nice yeah, if they stuck absolutely. around for you know more than just the top names. Yeah, they're they're just they're they are um, they're the people who watch it for the like let's bang bro kind of guys. You know, they're not looking for necessarily the skill and technique in the same aspect that say the hardcores are but at one point we were casuals right and then you you buy into it at that and then from there you become a hardcore but i i don't know i just i feel like bellator is is in this instance and they have before man i can't remember who the co-main event was but when they had dada 5000 versus kimbo they had a championship <laughs> fight on i think that might have also been was that? Um, I think it was a uh, Brett Lima Primus versus... and Michael Chandler. I think. Uh, for some reason, I'm thinking it was Lima versus. Um... Oh, Is that shoot. when Lima the won spider. the title from uh, Court? Yeah, it might, it Kork, might have been when he, he I can't he remember his name Kors- right now. Korshikov or Kork- yeah. Kork- I want to. Yeah. It I mean, I know. I, it's, I remember who it is, but spider. I just couldn't remember. Uh... I can't remember how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, Korsh, Korsh, it's not Krishnikov like an AK-47, but it's something similar to that. Uh, um, man, why can't I? I'm trying to. Either, either way, it was like a championship fight, 
Yeah. And uh, they they put this freak show, which is what it really was, on as the main event as a draw to get people to come in. I think that's bullshit. If you want it to be about the sport, then make it about the sport. You can use the spectacle to get people's eyes on it, but make the main event about what the sport really is, is the champions and those who are the best of the best. And push that forward and make sure you do a goddamn good job of selling that fight throughout the entire card that everyone's sitting around waiting to watch. You know, why they're Okay, they're so look at the looking stuff. it up to help to, to help my uh, memory. Uh we we're a yeah. little we're a little off on that. That was actually the co main event to uh, Hoist Gracie Ken Shamrock. Um part three. Hoist Gracie Ken Shamrock. Okay. Um there was no title fight on that one. So I think the one we're thinking of with uh, Kimbo Slice fighting was Kimbo Slice Ken Shamrock. And I think that was the main event, main event over a title fight. Um, okay. Yeah, but I mean, either way, the point still stands. Yeah, it's it's again. You you. I get the freak show. Um, I understand what you're using to to get eyes on it, but you're taking the you're taking the easy and that way was, out uh, by Pitbull Fieri against uh, uh, Daniel Weichel. So for the okay, good. Title. another uh, another great fucking fighter in Pitbull mm-hmm. Fieri against Daniel Horch. Those are fucking great guys to watch fight. But then again. You're not going to sell those guys. You're going to sell the freak show. So that's the I get people are there for the freak show. So they're going to watch the real yeah. fighters, and hopefully you'll grab them as fans. But that's bullshit to me. The There's main, no reason you can't sell them as the co-main event still and and get tickets. Correct. But that that's just it. Sell them as a co-main event. They're still going to get all the ticket sales inside the arena. But you want to get the eyes, you know, at home on TV land watching. Then you need to sell the main event during that fight. You've got the extra million eyeballs watching to see the freak show. Well, keep them in there. Do your goddamn job. Sell the fight. Sell the fighters. Sell the sport. Don't sell the fucking spectacle. And again, Bellator's taking the easy way out. And it's pissing me off because I had so much respect for Scott Coker, and I still do, but I'm starting to lose it if he can't turn this thing around and realize he's got to sell the fucking sport, not the spectacle. Yeah, I mean, I, I got it at first because you use the you use the spectacle to sell the sport, like you were saying. Uh, eventually, though, I I think, but then you have a name in Rory McDonald from the UFC who has a following from Canada that you could sell as the main event. Absolutely, he's the next yeah. GSP. Market yeah. him. He he's fucking great, man. He's his deadpan, dry personality really comes off well in long form interviews or when you actually talk to him about other shit other than what he's gonna do in his fighting like he, you know he's he's a great guy he's great marketable fun fighter technically in my mind top three walter weights in the whole fucking world market him bro you've got one of the best fighters on earth and you're gonna put him in a co-main event because you got a, a spectacle that you want to <laughs> bullshit bring him in with a spectacle co-main event great do your fucking job sell that main event fight Make them stick around to see it. They're they're being lazy. I agree. No, I'm hundred percent agree. But uh, so. let's let's uh let's uh get into what we uh, came here to do tonight for this, this episode. Well, yeah, well, I'm <laughs> way into that right now. Drink this beer. Bo- talk this bottle. This bottle's almost gone. I'm gonna have to start breaking into some of the other stuff, the cheaper stuff. Yeah, the cheaper stuff. Yeah, I cooked up some steak, some porterhouse, or some ribeye. Sorry, it was ribeye tonight. Perfect medium rare, just salt and pepper on it. Oh, so delicious. Drinking uh, beer while I was cooking it. So I've had a couple. Kosher salt, I'm right? Or just regular out. salt? Um, this is a this is a kosher household here. Absolutely, we sir. We respect and abide by all kosher <laughs> laws except for the fact that we eat um, lobster, uh, um, pork. Um, I think I have polyester blend in every single one of my well, clothes. As okay, a uh, another as another uh, meat uh, connoisseur, as you uh, as as you are, man, I I feel that if you don't use kosher salt on your meat, you shouldn't be cooking meat. <laughs> if if you don't use kosher salt on your meat, you might as well be putting pineapples on your fucking pizza, right? Oh, don't get me started on that. Pineapples do not belong on pizza. No, they don't. They belong Fuck. in a daiquiri of some sort. Yeah, or a fruit salad. <laughs> Damn it, we're getting sidetracked. Yeah, we are. We're angry uh, here, folks. We're worked up. Yeah, well, I mean, so. this is why we usually we started recording. Excuse me. <laughs> on Sundays, man, I get so uh, like, even though I did take a nap after work and I'm awake, I'm not as uh, jovial or spry as I usually am yeah. on a Sunday when I'm yeah. getting a good night's sleep. 
So we, we also didn't have an event to rile us up and get excited about. You know, a lot of times, even though it's a Saturday, it's late, ten o'clock. We're recording. Yeah. We just got done watching a fight. You know, a whole card. So we're. we're I did up. just get we're done watching Invicta something. though, and uh, I'll tell you one thing: time. Sarah Kaufman looked fantastic. She usually does, especially against lesser competition, and. Uh, you know, I think she's going to do her thing in Invicta. I think so, too. I mean, she wants to get back to the UFC. She said she was looking for a finish. Didn't happen. Went decision. But it was a dominant decision. So, um, I'll That's tell you who her, did yeah. also look really good tonight was uh, Vanessa Porto. Oh, yeah? Picks up a second win in 35, day, 35 days, man. So, yeah, 28-8 now. It was a slick jiu-jitsu submission. Uh, back, uh, rear naked choke. It was textbook jiu-jitsu. In MMA, it was beautiful. So good for her. Yeah, I yeah I missed those fights, but good thirty five day turnaround, man. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, two victories. So good for her. Congratulations. So anyways, Saturday That's man, how you get noticed, yo. Two twenty. UFC two twenty. Stipe Miocic versus Francis, the fucking scariest human being on earth <laughs> in Ganu. The Predator. Yeah, he might as well change his name to that. He doesn't Here's have the, the dreads, thing, man. I can't come the Predator. He needs some Here's dreads. the thing about this fight. I'm excited for it. It's easily the best heavyweight fight that they've probably booked ever, maybe, well, at least in the longest time. I mean, Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir Part 2 at UFC 200 was probably the most perfect storm when it came to heavyweight title fights. Yeah, perfect storm. I think that was a good. I was going to say, what would you say would be the number two if this is the number one? This is the number one for me as a hardcore, not just a fan fan, but as a hardcore for heavyweight because – I think Stipe is one of the most well-rounded heavyweights we've had in a long time, uh, except when it became Velasquez would be equally rounded. And Francis Ngannou is just fucking scary. He's not nearly as well-rounded as Stipe, but, dude, he's well, deceptively long. Here's the thing, here's the thing about that. I want, I, want, I want to cut you off real quick. Yeah. How do we know? We don't. <laughs> okay, you're right. You're right. We we don't, we don't know because he hasn't been tested in some ways. But the reason I'm saying that uh, he, he's not as well-rounded is simply because – well, I guess you could be, you know, a, that well-rounded in, in five years of training versus Stipe's 15, Stipe's collegiate wrestling and, and whatnot, you know, career that he had. So he's obviously got the wrestling. He did golden gloves for a while, you know what I mean? Like, so he's got the boxing pedigree. He's got the wrestling pedigree. So I would say he's his background would prove him to be more well-rounded than in Ganu. Okay, so you're right. I'm speaking a little <laughs> bit on assumptions here, yeah. fucker. Yeah, it's all but, assumptions, but it's it's all right though. But uh, I I just can't help but uh, think of Francis Ngannou's lone submission win in the UFC. Now it didn't really prove much because no. he just grabbed the 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 Kimura standing on Anthony Hamilton and then kind of basically just tossed him to the ground with one arm and never let go yep. of it. But it shows he has at least a bit of grap a grappling acumen to complement his striking and his power. Maybe he's got more that we just aren't seeing. And if anybody's going to test that, it's not Stipe. I'm sorry. Stipe's, I don't, for all this talk of his collegiate wrestling, I don't trust his MMA wrestling. I really don't. What what I'm expecting him to do and what I'm hoping he's going to do, for me, what I believe he should do is take the um, Cain Velasquez approach. Put him up against the cage, make him wear your weight, and keep a pace on him that he cannot continue to go through five rounds at. That was a that's a great strategy. I wonder how that started to work out for Overeem. <laughs> well, Overeem Overeem backed away and and, and well, Overeem did the push him to the cage and tried to hold him there to kind of do the same thing, make him make him hold his hold his weight. He did, but and then he realized that flinch. oh fuck, I'm not as strong as Ngannou. This is true. And I think that's this what happens with Stipe. True. And I can't well, get over the fact of how slow Stipe starts his fights. If we remember correctly, his point. last title fight, Junior Dos Santos, do, I, I don't know what the fuck happened, but Dos Santos injured his leg. He was winning, and then he just kept backing up against the cage. Yeah. And so yeah, I, Stipe I don't know. Stipe was yeah. losing that fight. He was easily losing that fight before Dos Santos stupidly decided – don't even know what kind of, I don't know what happened there. And then even going back to the Overeem fight, he was stopped, or not stopped, sorry, he was dropped. He was caught, he was, he was. dropped. If Nganu catches him with any of those shots, he's going to sleep. Oh, you're sleeping for a couple of days. You're going to wake <laughs> up and be like, all right, man, we're and ready. New. Come on, wait, let's go. Yeah, 
I mean, but I'm, I, I, I really hate to discredit um, Stipe here. I, I love Stipe. He's a great guy. He's a nice guy. He's still a firefighter. He refuses to ever give up that job, uh, which is totally respectful. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Respect that guy so much. He's going to sleep. And there's going to be a new champion on Saturday. Yeah, history would indicate that's likely to happen. I'm just looking at uh, Stipe's record, though. I think we all – I thought he won the Junior Dos Santos fight, the first I one. Too. I'd put him on a nine-fight Great fight. fight. Great fight. It was a great fight. It was a fun fight. It was brutal and bloody. But, yeah, I, I put him I put him on a nine-fight winning streak with that fight. His last loss to me was his first loss to Stefan Struve, where he did get TKO'd. Um, and after that – one of the Bernie few Nelson. fights Struve uh, used his uh, height and reach. <laughs> yeah, he used his knee reach to throw like a jab and knocked him out. Struve's been yeah. getting better at using his reach. He's been getting a lot better at using it. But it's still the thing is, is when you're seven foot away and you're throwing a jab, I don't care how quick it is. You got all the time in the world to get out the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, no, that's true. Height can become a disadvantage. It really can, especially when you're that much bigger. But yeah, so he beat Roy Nelson, Gabriel Gonzaga. Uh, Fabio Maldonado, who really is a light heavyweight, who if he actually ate better, could be a middleweight. Uh, <laughs> the loss to Dos Santos, which I believe he won. I think most people believe he won that fight. Well, it was that, in... that Fabio Maldonado fight was a short notice fight. Uh, Maldonado stepped in Correct. Uh, to save a Brazil card. Yep. Yeah, and Jesus, I don't ever want to see that a... again. No. Well, Maldonado <laughs> did the same thing to. Um... Good old Fedor, but Fedor got yeah, the but Fedor is never a real heavyweight. <laughs> no, Fedor Fedor easily could have been two hundred five. Fedor in in his prime in his early days when he had the the delts from nowhere and his big old mass and shoulders, and he just kind of had like the the um, former Mister Olympian body after he stopped working out for fifteen years. You know, was retired. He was a heavyweight then, but after he he came to Elite XC and started fighting in the U.S. Um, he lost a lot of muscle, it looked like to me. I'm just going to say maybe his recovery time was increased. I'm just going to say it. That's all. You know, recovery time. I, I, I know what you're getting at. I know what you're getting at, but we're not going to get into that. A bush. Yeah, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so officially, official prediction for the main event, who do you have? <clears throat> I have Francis Ngannou versus for, uh, via first-round TKO. And it hurts me to say it. That's why I say it like it hurt me, because it does. That's what I have as well. Uh, speaking of uh, official predictions, you need to uh, – my own co-host hasn't even joined the damn league yet. What? How did I join the goddamn league yet? It says you I'm joined. Uh, oh, well, maybe you have. I don't know. I haven't checked it. I was just going off of what somebody commented earlier. <laughs> Who's commenting on what I'm doing? Who's worried about me? Tell me to get their own goddamn life. <laughs> Let me check the league real quick to make sure. Is, see how many people. MMA we got like 25 right? people in the group, but like only seven people. Okay, there we go. Bam, no, oh, Jason, eh, Stone, Silva. No, you're not. See? See, motherfucker? It's MMA to the max now, right? Yeah, or I mean, the it... link's in the group. Well, I just tried to search it, dude. Maybe I haven't joined. All right. Yeah, no, Boom. you haven't. I'll go do it right now. So in the Comey well, event, uh, UFC light heavyweight champion John Jones. Psych! Daniel Cormier. Light heavyweight champion should be John Jones <laughs> if he could just keep his nose clean. You know what I'm saying yeah. there? You like how I did that one? Keep his nose clean? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. Daniel Cormier, light heavyweight champion, taking on. I don't know, man. Do you... Are we even going to have time for this fight? Ah, there's no time to talk about this fight, dude. No time to talk about Vulcan, no time, no time Ozdemir. Man. Who uh, no time is was in both of our belt. top three of the uh, the breakout fighter of the year, I believe, on our last episode. Yeah, I believe so as well. Yeah, so he was in our top three. Um, does 2018 signal, uh, signal a culmination of his breakout 2017 year? No. <laughs> it does not. Just, uh, he does just not straight beat. and to the point. Does not beat... At all, our good friend old uh, what's his name, uh, Daniel Cormier. Old Thug one Rose. Guy could be Thug Cormier. Rose. Thug Rose. Thug Rose. <laughs> yeah, I just I'm I'm with you, man. I mean, as as good as he's looked knocking out people, he's knocking out. He knocked out Jimmy Manoa, who's a striker with no chin. He yeah. he knocked out Sirkinov with a perfectly timed shot to the back of the head, or not back of the head. Sorry, uh, behind the ear. 
was wonderful, and and he got him as time. he was moving in. Yeah, and and he was able to like, Serkinov's head had nowhere to go; it was right up against the cage, so it was just like straight impact. Um, I just can't get over his lone Bellator fight. It was Bellator 115 in 20 in uh, 2014 <laughs> against Kelly and, and uh, Anunson. Taken down, subbed by Neck Crank. He shows yeah. no ground game whatsoever in his career. And if there's one place he's going to be against DC, it's on the ground. Correct. And DC, well, DC's got great MMA wrestling. Talking about MMA wrestling, he's he's great at against pinning you up against the cage, getting an underhook. Working different takedown, working for the double, working for the body lock, going for the single, punching you while you're trying to defend him. He's fucking awesome at it, dude. Yeah, he's 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 one of the best of all time at two hundred five. If his name, if it, I, I believe Joe Rogan said it best, that uh, the only the only slight against Daniel Cormier's career is he was fighting in a time that John Jones was alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that that that's the only thing. Otherwise, he might go down as the goat if it wasn't for that. Yep, at two at least I at two hundred five. So and and he doesn't get enough respect. It's not his fault. John Jones keeps fucking up. <laughs> Let me ask you, and 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 as I ask you this, I'm going to ask everybody that's listening, all five of you, um, oh, all five of you. It's a busy night. If you were in the same position and you lost the title to John Jones or to whoever you're fighting, and he gets popped, p- fails a drug test, and the UFC says, hey, you're still the champ. It was a no contest. You never lost. Here's the title. Would you turn it down? Yeah. Fuck no. Yeah, I would. No, you wouldn't because there's so many incentives oh, okay, okay. And, and things, in, uh, contract incentives that come with being That's the champion. I'd wrap that belt around my waist and I would say, <laughs> once I defend this title, we all understand I'm the real champ. You know what I mean? I'd kind of play it as a backhanded compliment kind of thing. Yeah. That's how I would do it. Yeah, it makes sense. But I just yeah, there's there's so much there's so much that comes with being the champion in, in the contract, pay per view buys, everything. You know, your pay automatically goes up. Um, sponsorship yeah. from Reebok goes up. Yeah, yep. of course you're gonna take it. Yeah, why not? It'd be stupid not to. I mean, those who know, no, cool, good for them. And those that yeah. don't know, well, you don't know. So deal with it. <laughs> Screw them. Yeah, so any I, I I there's so many people out there that are just like, oh, he's not the real champ. He's like, yeah, there's a C next to his name. He's the real champ right now. Sorry, I hate to tell you that. Well, That's just but, how and, it works. And, and and the semantics of it all, he really is. He didn't lose his belt. Yeah, he fought it was a, a no cheater, contest. Which he didn't lose his belt. Yeah, which you know, and to be fair though, the uh, the same thing happened to uh, Tim Sylvia a long time ago. Yeah. Um, no, no, I'm sorry, not Tim Sylvia. Uh, yeah, Tim Sylvia. Well, no, no, Tim Sylvia, he 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 failed for steroids. Who, damn it, who did he beat that didn't get? Ah, damn it, uh, Gan oh, McGee. There you go. Yeah. yeah, Dan McGee. Good old, and, old uh, Dan McGee. Mm-hmm. So that is not the same scenario. Tim Sylvia was the uh, defending champion, but correct, he failed, and they never turned it to a no contest. <clears throat> Excuse me. They never made it a no contest, so that that's what the issue was. But I don't know why that fight popped in my mind. Jesus, I am just out there. I don't know. We're on tonight. crazy tangents tonight. <laughs> I'm just out there tonight. I'm just everywhere, man. The uh, the next fight on the next card, though, so we're both picking Cormier. So there's going to be yeah, an I'm and new cool. and an and still in the main and co-main event, at least in yeah. our minds. Featherweight fight uh, after that, or before those fights, uh, Calvin Qatar, who is phenomenal. A phenomenal fighter at seventeen and two. Um, he's uh, he made his UFC de- UFC debut. Uh, beat Andre Feely at uh, which is Cormier's last fight. <laughs> Cormier versus Jones yeah, too, kidding. which is really f- kind of weird. Uh, taking on the very underrated, not getting enough love in my mind, Shane Burgos, who is undefeated at ten and zero, including being three and zero in the UFC. Yeah, I think he's getting enough love. He's ten and zero. He's not getting enough love from the people, from the fans. I mean, he's on the main card, so that's cool. Yeah, I think they're they're giving him a, a proper push. He's an exciting fighter to watch. He, he finishes guys for the most part. 
I mean, yeah, I don't know. Well, does. This is this is I think a bigger test than he's had right here against uh, Calvin Qatar than he's had. So I think it's a know, test he's got to move up the ranks. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. It's these these are these are both potential, you know, up and com- they're up and comers. They're potential uh, contenders. So let's see what they can do. I, I mean, I like the matchmaking lately. You know, you get these these younger, less known guys who are on a tear fighting each other. It's good. I'm yeah, I like them. I like them. Uh, I like that they're putting this fight right before the co-main event, right before the uh, the double headliner. Um, it's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like uh, what wrestling does. Um, right before like the main event, they'll put like a, a cool down match, something that somebody does the fans won't care about, something the fans can go to the bathroom during, and all that stuff. So you're calling this a piss break fight? It is. That's that that that's what the placement is on the card. I hate to say it, but that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's not to me, but that's that's their thinking. I look at the uh, John Vellante fight as the piss break fight. <laughs> no, because that's the fight that's going to be fireworks, man. It's not going to be good, but it's going to be entertaining as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be phone booth time. The yeah. phone booth fighting club. I could see uh, uh, Francis Marber also taking him down and submitting him, though. So, Yeah, yeah, John's got good good wrestling, but his, his defensive wrestling isn't all that good. He, yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't like to use it very him. much. No, he doesn't. He likes to stand and bang, bro. He's a boxer. Yeah. He's a uh, wrestler who fell in love with his power in his hands, and and unfortunately, he wants to knock out. unfortunately, Jean Vellante is going to lose and probably be cut from the UFC. I don't see him winning this fight. I just, I, I don't, uh, I don't pick Vellante. I just don't. That's I, like a rule. I, I I've done it before because I like him and I <laughs> pick with my heart too much, but uh, I think he gets stopped. I think you stop uh, late in the second or, or halfway through the third round via TKO. Yeah, when you get TKO'd in 2017 by uh, Shogun Hua, Hua, you've officially hit a ceiling. In the third round, too, he gassed himself out, man. Yeah, he did. Going back to that so uh, old... Calvin Katara and Shane Burgos fight, I was just like thinking of oh, I, I didn't get to say it, but uh, I was thinking, uh, so winner of this is going to be uh, fed to Zabit. Namaga Godoff. You think so? <laughs> That's messed up, dude. <laughs> yeah. And Zabit is so badass, man. Zagot Magomed Sherpov. <laughs> no, I'm still I'm still waiting for them to book the uh, Zabit and uh, Yair Rodriguez. Oh, uh, that would be yeah. that's either going to be one of two things. It's going to be two guys dancing around, you know, trying to faint and find their angle and find their spot, or it's going to be some flashy taekwondo fireworks. Well, what it's going to be is it's going to be the uh, the the end of the UFC's love infatuation and hype with Yair Rodriguez. <laughs> I think they've lost that love already a little bit, but after they fed him to Frankie Edgar, that's fucked up, dude. Dude, <laughs> that so yeah, mean. that was that was a really fucked up fight. Like, how the hell? Are you going to go from beating a washed-up BJ Penn? And I say that as one of BJ Penn's biggest fans my whole life. To Frankie fucking Edgar. Who, by the way, in my mind, I know we're, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, is the next featherweight champion. Oh, this is where you and I part ways, my friend. There's levels of this shit. And I love Max, and Max is on that level, but Frankie's just on that level right above. I'm telling you, this is look. I'm doing MMA math on this one just to prove my point, dude. Don't that's ever I use say. MMA math on this show. That's all MMA I math gotta say. MMA work. math, son. It never works. No, it, it never it never works. But I'm I'm telling you, Max is his takedown defense is where he's had his weakest part, his weakest weakestness, his weakestness. But. Uh, <laughs> I see him being able to defend the takedown, and I also see him being able to stifle Frankie's entrances. I think he's he's going to be able to use footwork, distance control, all these kinds of things to keep Frankie from getting inside and taking him down because I think he beats Frankie up on their feet all day long. If it's a kickboxing match, Holloway wins all day long. I think Frankie Holloway looks like Frankie uh, Yair, just a little no. tougher for Frankie. Not even, not even close, dude. No Max way. Max is gonna be. I, I'm sorry, I don't He's bet against Frankie anymore. On his I don't and kicks and get taken down. Max, is, Max is gonna, gonna be on his back and Frankie, and and he's not getting up when Frankie's on top. Sorry. I when love Frankie's Max. I think Max is great. I think up. he's one of the best in the world. But Frankie Edgar is 
the elite of the elite. Max is elite, but Frankie's elite of the elite. I'm telling you, if he gets him down, he's definitely going to be able to keep him down for a long time. I he's just gonna don't see him. He's going to beat down. on him too. I just it's, it's to say it's going to be like Yair part two. That's that's so disrespectful to Max Holloway. Okay, so here's the thing. I know Max Holloway's gotten better, and he's gotten you know obviously really good since this fight happened. But he was taken down at will by Conor McGregor on a torn. ACL. Correct, but that was eleven fights ago. I know. That's why. That's why I, I preface by saying he's gotten much better. Who has he fought that has the takedowns and entries and level changes that Frankie has? Ricardo Lamas is not. Ricardo Lamas didn't even try takedowns. He stood in, and who, and, who at forty five has them. that? Who at forty five has that? Just nobody. He didn't get exactly. Chad Mendes, maybe, but obviously he was suspended. But. That's what I'm basing my pick on a lot, too. That's why I think it looks like the Yair, Yair uh, Rodriguez fight, because I think I don't think Max stops his takedowns. I don't. I just I look at it. If Conor McGregor was able to trip him, take him down, everything, I, I that was a much you can't younger, train much you can't higher, train to defend Frankie style takedowns without fighting people like Frankie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, I, I agree. You got to train for Frankie if you're going to fight Frankie. For sure, you can't just go off of this is what I do. This is my technique. I'm just maybe if Ricardo Lamas would have thrown uh, more takedown att- uh, attempts out there, I'd probably be like, okay, but he didn't. It was a striking match for the most part. Well, uh, I mean, his takedowns are different, you know. Yeah, well, he doesn't do the same kind of wrestling takedowns. His are more of, of body throws and gets up high and. God, this is a good uh, stout. Whew. Sounds good. I keep hearing you smacking your lips whenever you drink it. But we're we're getting all off off base. <laughs> Opening up the main card of UFC 220 is Thomas Almeida, who saw his star take a huge hit when he was knocked out by Cody Garbrandt. Uh, rebounded very nicely in his last nice. fight, taking on the. I don't know if I could call him. Is he red hot right now? But I don't know. Huh. He's he's coming off a loss to Pedro Munoz, I know that, but he's still one of the better up and coming uh, bantamweights in Rob Font. Rob Font. I think with this fight, a lot of people are going to overlook Rob Font because they're going to look at the record of Almeida. Sure. And they're going to think, and they're going to see, um, you know, his only lo- his own. Uh, no, oh, fucking damn, dude. I am losing myself. Got two losses, bro. Yeah, yeah Almeida lost right to Jimmy there? Rivera in his last fight. Yeah, I was going to say he just... <laughs> okay, I'm letting you I'm letting you catch yourself. Rivera beat him in a decision. A, not a close one, not a horrible one, no, but... No, yeah, it was a dominant got... decision. Yeah. It wasn't like 30-24 or anything, but yeah, he whipped his ass. See, this is why I don't like doing this on work nights. Like when I when I get when I was Saturdays, unless I'm I'm watching an event, I'm lost. And, it's, and it, what's funny is as we're we're doing the show, I'm thinking in the back of my head, this is what we sound like during a fight. We <laughs> we get out most of our like tangents. Like I mean, we just spent 20 minutes on Frankie Edgar, who's not fighting for another month. Yeah, right. You know what I mean, like we do that during a fight. So when it comes time to to normally record, we've gotten all that tangent out of our system for the most part. But yeah, Rob. Well, and Fon, I'm usually I'm out. usually better about you know my memory about who's fought who and uh yeah. You're just tired, buddy. You've been up too too early and not drank enough beer. Yeah, I haven't. I actually took a nap, woke up, made dinner for the little one because the fiance uh, his fiance's at work, fiance's at work, and uh, just was watching Invicta. I was saving my beer drink until we did the show. Probably should have started ahead of time. You should have. I did with dinner. Yeah, with my steak. Pro- probably starting with the show. It's like it hits you a little, you know, because it always hits you in the beginning. Like when you start yeah. getting that buzz, it hits you, and uh, these stouts do get me uh, real quick. I'm I'm a little bit of a lightweight now as I'm getting older. I'm not gonna lie. That's why I kind of try you're to piece li- myself. You're, you're literally a lightweight. I, I think <laughs> you would have to put on weight to fight at flyweight, right? Bitch, I am a healthy 157. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Ricardo Almeida. Or, fuck, Ricardo Almeida. Thomas Almeida. Thomas. Thomas Almeida, uh, Rob, Rob Font. Font, great fight. I 
think Almeida is going to win this by decision, but I am not going to put it past Rob Font catching that chin. Almeida does not have that great of a chin. He was almost stopped by Jimmy Rivera. He was dropped in the first round. Um, and after that, I Jimmy Rivera kind of coasted. Like I mean, he was out striking him, but he didn't really throw any throw much power shots in that fight. Um, Correct. He was almost stopped by Brad Pickett. He was almost stopped by uh, Yves Dubois. He, you know, Yves Dubois. So Cody Garbrandt obviously stopped him. I can see Cody Font Garbrandt stopping him, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Almeida in this fight. I'm on the fence on this one, but I, I like Almeida as, as a fighter. I liked him before the Cody Garbrandt fight. Um, I think he's, he's a perennial contender. I think Rob Font is a perennial gatekeeper. So I put, I put uh, Thomas Almeida's skill level slightly above Rob Font. So that's why I'm going to pick Rob Font to win via decision. It'll be a hard-fought, grinding fight, but he'll win a, a clear decision, but it'll be a good fight. This is number one bullshit. Number one bullshit. <laughs> that's how I feel, man. Well, that's the main that's card for UFC 220. Um, I'm trying not to make this show any worse than it already is so far. What? What? You did say it worse, dude. We've had. I don't worse, know, man. man. I've, I'm. I'm usually. I'm usually the level-headed one that knows everything and has my memory of everything. But I'm looking up names. I'm. I'm pulling a Riverside Joe here. I know. When I'm checking you, dude, the tables have turned, my friend. Oh, how the tables have turned. Yeah. This the year have turned. is Riverside Joe's year. <laughs> I still got to join the goddamn league. I checked. The They're not going to turn on the league, see. man. That and on, on the pick 'em. I'm, I'm still going to get my shit. I'm still going to win at the end of the year. By the way, everybody, pay the fuck up. Yeah, so far uh, your chick is the only one that's paid. Hey, check this out though. Actually, where, that what, that where? payment on that pool was for this year. Oh, that's this year. I can't add to my own pool on on oh, there, that's, so that's... I had her. She had to add twenty each t- uh, twenty dollars twice. All right, so, so we we owe, we owe the me. we owe the group for yeah, and I got a ref- right? You got you owe okay. me personally for last year. Everybody does, and then the the pool twenty dollars for each person, and then Aaron, well, you our good yeah. friend Aaron. Well, how much? How much is my wife going to call it a wash? Straight to PayPal. What's up? Said, well, since my wife got second place, you know, it's last year just a wash. Do I not owe you any money? Well, no. We're, we're you, me, everybody that's paying is going to pay in, and then we'll just split from what's there, and then the rest of the people will go fuck yeah. themselves. They can go fuck themselves. That's a good point. Hey, check this out though. I'm trying <laughs> to find the league where you posted it. When did you post it, dude? I don't know, like two days ago. Oh, two days ago. I went to the bottom. It was two days ago. If you haven't already, make sure you PayPal link below. All right, dude. I didn't need the PayPal link, bro. I need the link to the fucking league. Well, for other people that joined it, it's got to be on there somewhere, right? Yeah, it's on there. <clears throat> Damn it. <laughs> I'm not good at this. Uh, Why are we talking media. about this on the podcast now? Because, <laughs> oh, dude, this fucking show's been off the rails for an hour now. <clears throat> yeah, why just this? Sh- Let's just take a moment <clears throat> of silence in in regards to this episode. And it's not even like a bad episode so far, just because you know we we were completely wasted. It's just a bad episode because we're completely unprepared and we knew what we we're going to talk about, but it's like. Cool, yep. I guess. I mean, we just all right. Just, didn't have the night. We weren't good. We weren't. No. I don't think either of us were ready to do it. I don't think either of us were. Yeah. Again, we're just so used to having the fight or it being on a Sunday after a fight. <clears throat> it changes things, dude. But Dustin yeah. Ortiz is going to be fighting a little flyweight fight. Fun guy to watch. Well, we also got the uh, the uh, Abdul uh, Razak Al Hassan and uh, Sabah Hamasi rematch from. How, how the fuck do you do that? I know I've been looking forward to this rematch. <laughs> how do I do what? pronounce their fucking names if you think I'm good at pronouncing names because I don't think I'm that good I get them every once in a while I just try to remember from you know uh, just hearing them um, Chris the producer on UFC Un- Unfiltered I don't know if you've ever listened yeah. to that with Matt Sarah and uh, Jim Norton and my favorite that comedian, motherfucker is great at knowing how to pronounce these people's names yeah I Some want people to just have to talk to that, that guy yeah. fuck Jim Norton and Matt Sarah, I want to talk to Chris Producer. <laughs> I've met Jim Norton uh, two occasions. Uh, just so you know, he's a great guy. 
funny comedian. Well, he seems like a great guy. Sometimes <laughs> yeah, his I met uh, him self-deprecating humor gets a little gets to be a little too much at times because it's just like bam, 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 it's right after another. But yeah, it's heavy-handed. But that's just who he is. Yeah, it's like, I, I it's like, like it. we get it, bro. We get it. We get it. You like trannies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Excuse me. People of transsexual agendas or what have you. I don't want to be politically incorrect, Zir or Zer or whatever. <laughs> oh, I hate you kids. I was having a, a debate with somebody earlier. They were talking about the whole uh, Chelsea Manning is going to run for Senate. Who? Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Manning. Chelsea Clinton? No, Chelsea Manning, the he uh, formerly Bradley Manning, the guy that uh, the former uh, military person I, that uh, I know a gentleman named Brad who was a uh, secret giveaway error, and he's going to want to be in the Senate and give away more secrets. <laughs> that doesn't seem like well, a bright idea. It was just, it was just like he's like he's still a dude, and I'm like, okay, well, that's fine, that's your opinion and all that, but like legally change the name to Chelsea Manning. So I mean, the name's Chelsea. I can legally change my name to Pocahontas, and that's my name. But that doesn't so, make you an Indian. I know, but it's still my name. American. Correct. This is what this is all I'm saying, dude. If you want to get a sex change and take hormones and go from fucking Robert to Roberta, I love you. I'll call you Roberta, and I'll call you her and she and all that crap. But when you die, <laughs> when aliens come to Earth, and they dig up your grave, and they check your bones, your DNA says you're a fucking dude. That's all I'm saying. That's my opinion on it. I respect you. No, that's you. fine. I'll I just don't know why we call you what you brought that call. up. Like, oh, because I was listening to Joe Rogan earlier today. <laughs> so, uh, something that he was talking about, and that little weirdness of human culture, or American culture, was bugging me today. He's talking about all the different pronouns and whatever. <laughs> Look, man, I'm going to tell you what right now. As a vegan, crossfitting, atheist, binary human. You're binary? Oh. I'm not offended. That's gross. <laughs> I don't know. The it's fact just that you're going to willingly say that you're binary? I, I recommend yeah. anybody that hasn't played it yet to play South uh, South Park, the, stick of, uh, the Fractured Behole. Um, there's Fractured. a huge joke multiple times in there about the whole PC culture and transgenderism and all of everything. It's really funny. So. It's all bullshit, dude. That's how you know the Empire is on its way out. <laughs> arguing about shit that's not real as if it is. Like, it fucking matters when we got people blowing up other people. Anyways, about some shit that is real, dude. Okay, Uriah well, Hall. We talked, we talked, oh, Uriah Hall. Yeah, poor dude, man. I hope he's okay. He was on his way to go way in and fainted. Uh, yeah, gurneyed and out. Call it and uh, Jesus, man. And those seizures happen when you cut ridiculous amounts of weight. When your body's potassium and sodium levels drop too low, your body will go into seizure because your brain no longer can create those synap synaptic, uh, <laughs> whatever the hell they are, where you, they can fire across from each other. They're not reaching your brain. Short circuits a touch. You trying to uh, pronounce dangerous. that word reminded me of the movie Biodome. Yeah. <laughs> where he's like, you know, and, and they're trying to, trying to sell the scientists on growing a purple sticky punch. They're like, yeah. and it's a great source of photosynthesis. <laughs> yeah, photosynthesis. But, uh, yeah, so that's it's not good, man. You get that dehydrated. It was a couple seasons ago on Tough, um, American Top Team versus Black Zillions. Uh, one of the guys out there, same thing, cutting weight, fell asleep and seizured up, man. It, that's scary, scary, scary stuff, dude. So. Um, last I heard from Ariel Hawani's tweet, he was doing okay. He was, you know, conscious and responsive and all that stuff. But damn, that's tough, man. I hope he's, I hope he's all right. And, and uh, you know, feel bad for Vitor. I know this was going to be his last fight, and all the time and money and energy he he spent on getting prepared for this fight. You know, I, I feel for yeah. him as well. I feel for him but, as well. But my heart goes out to you. Right? I hope he he's doing okay. Uh, yeah, definitely hope he's doing all right. But the silver lining in all this is. This actually allows and sets up for the most perfect rematch slash retirement, double retirement fight. Bisbing versus. Yes, sir. Bisbing, Belfort, and London. No TRT. No TRT. TRT. So, and, and there's so many stories that can go into this fight because of it. Obviously, you got the rematch. Bisbing thinks yep. that TRT is why he lost that fight. Could he be yep. right? Maybe. Yep. So, we find out. Bisping either avenges the loss on a non-TRT uh, Vitor 
and proves that he was right the whole time, or he gets knocked out. Now he he weathers the storm of the Vitor yeah. Bell, or which I think he does. Then he beats him. We'll see, see, I would say that if it wasn't for what just uh, transpired with Kelvin Gastelum, I think yeah, Bisping is honest, get, about to retire. I know, but I think Bisping's weeks. about to retire at the right time because his chin is going. He was dropped by GSP, who was. doesn't have great power in his punches. Yeah, but but Bisping gets rocked a lot, but he doesn't get TKO'd or KO'd. Unless it's a testosterone enhanced cheater. Yeah. Well Bisping or, two to three years ago, non TRT V tour, I would say absolutely Bisping wins. Now, retiring sure. everything, I don't know. Maybe it, that's why I'm maybe excited about it. That's fight. why it's great. That's why it's good. They so need Bisping they said, that's what they need to book. Bisping said uh, I'm paraphrasing, I don't know exactly what it was he said, but uh Gaslam's not the asshole to to put me into retirement fight. <laughs> I think uh, a V tour fight that could be the asshole that uh, sets him up for retirement. I, I would love to see it. I would love to see that fight, and I'd love to see it on the same car our boy uh, Eric Anders is fighting on down there in Brazil. Well, no, it's going to be in London. Oh, you think they're going to they're going to Bisping it? Yeah, they're that's when Bisping Bisping's, Bisping's going to retire in London. And Vitor, okay. if he wants to fight Bisping again, if they want to book it, it's going to happen in London. Sorry, buddy. V- Vitor, yeah, Vitor doesn't care about not not that he doesn't care about Brazil, but. Uh, he he was going to retire in St. Louis, so why would he need to retire in Brazil? So no, that's a good yeah, call. Exactly, he doesn't London, care. That'd be perfect. That'd be perfect. I mean, Vitor's lived in in uh, Florida for what twenty something years now. I think. Yeah, he's not Brazilian. He lives in America. So whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, just because you live in America doesn't make you an American. Now we're getting back into this whole stuff. <laughs> uh, no, I'm saying it's like the same thing with Connor. Where he's like Ireland. I'm all about Ireland. It's like you've been living in Las Vegas how long, motherfucker? You better. Stop trying to promote that you're like supporting Ireland. You, you're you're a Las Vegan, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> he lives in Ireland now. That he's a hundred millionaire because the money goes a lot further there. Oh yeah, true. That is true. Um. So yeah. real quick, let's move As on to Bellator one ninety two. Let's just talk about the two top fights. Who we think is going to win? Um. We're yeah. going to start with the co-main event because the main event is going to go kind of lead into our entire talk that we promised everybody last week. What talk? Um, we talking? What? <laughs> I'm getting punchy, dude. Yeah, I am too. Fucking, I'm getting, this is a good stout, man. Jesus. <laughs> um, I should have drank a Red Bull before we did this show. That probably would have helped. That's usually been my uh, my main, my main go-to thing. I drink a Red Bull before every show. Kind of helps me yeah, stay see, on track. Gives yeah, me I don't, wings. Do. I, don't, I don't normally work on days we do this show. I usually, you know, don't work on weekends, but actually well, being I, out on the field and... Yeah. Again, I didn't do anything laborious because I am a pussy, and I don't. I, I give a hats off to guys who. Yeah, people. He makes the black people work. do all the field work. He doesn't do. Um, it. So the, uh, we're in Southern <laughs> California. Um, black people are in construction and do a decent amount, but most of the trade that I work with are uh, Hispanic gentlemen. Yeah. It's like, so he doesn't. Right. He doesn't pick the cotton himself. People, come on! Don't don't let him kid you. No! 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 But sometimes I got to walk out there in the heat and like do, <laughs> do survey and stuff yeah. like that. And then you feel that one bead of sweat drop down your brow. You're like, you motherfuckers. Seven of them, bro. I actually had to wipe off my sunglasses. Dude. They're getting <laughs> dirty and shit, too. I know. It was, kind of, it was cool. actually kind of uh, kind of warm down there today. It got warm, really warm down there. So. Yeah, I was down in South Irvine, man, and I was actually sweating at 7 o'clock this morning. I'm like, holy crap, it's a warm one. Yeah. Anywho. And Bellator, back to the Bellator. Douglas Lima, Roy McDonald. How do you have this fight going? I don't even know why I have to ask. I know who you have. How do you have him winning? Douglas Lima has historically been susceptible to the takedown and has limited yes. ability to scramble and get back up. Very similar to his brother, who actually has great top game. Diego Lima, right? Um, Roy McDonald gets inside the reach of Douglas Lima, swoops him up with a quick, simple, easy double against the cage, pounds him out for three rounds until it's done with a submission or a TKO. I, I think Douglas Lima is one of the best Walter weights out there, but what he has going for him more than others is his size. He's a fucking huge Walter weight. Roy McDonald doesn't care. Roy McDonald's strong as shit. Technical is all get out, and I think that's how he wins the fight. What do you got? I'm 
pretty much in complete agreement with you. Um, yeah. I'm not sure Rory goes for the takedowns, though. That's the thing with uh, Lima. I think He's he stands. stand with him? I think he does. I think he stands with them the entire time and wins a five round decision. Okay, well let's let's play some um, MMA like comparison. Does Douglas Lima hit as hard or harder than Robbie Lawler? No. So he doesn't hit as hard as Robbie Lawler. No. Is is he more technically sound with his striking than Robbie Lawler? Uh, with his entire striking, like uh, with his Muay Thai, yes. Correct. Boxing, it's full, no. It's full kickboxing. Full yeah. kickboxing. Yeah, full kickboxing, yes. Uh, boxing, no. Okay. Does he have better distance management as far as working his jab and staying on the outside than – I'm going to go back again because the last time that, that Roy lost, right, to a TKO was Robbie Lawler. Does he have better than Robbie Lawler? Which he was winning up until that TKO Douglas. loss. Correct. So Douglas Lima, I think, is, is, is more technically sound with his stand-up – I think better distance than than um, Lawler. That's what I'm saying. Do you think he has better distance control, better jab, better outside game? I do, actually. I do. Okay. I think Robbie, time... Robbie Lawler is more of a, a boxer and brawler. Correct. So. It, with real heavy hands, great precision, great speed, mm-hmm. great timing, a great boxer. Well-rounded yeah. in, in his boxing, his takedown defense is second to none. Lima, Lima showed all that in the uh, Loren Flarkin fight. His his distance management, foot, footwork, and uh, control was on point. Yeah, absolutely, and he won that fight the right way. Last time Robbie Lawler fought someone with that kind of distance management and control and ability to keep it on the outside was against Wonder Boy. I don't know if it was simply because his nose wasn't completely healed, but Robbie did not look comfortable in that fight. Robbie needs to get inside the pocket. You mean Rory? I think what. Rory, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Damn it, I'm doing what you were doing. Rory <laughs> needs to get inside the pocket, and I think once he gets inside the pocket, his instinct against Douglas Lima, and I hope he's being trained to do so, I know he's still doing a little bit of TriStar and then back at home at BC, is going to be get inside, swoop up the double, drop him, tripod position, stand and bang. Get up on his toes, tripod, sit back. Don't don't let Douglas control your posture. Rory can pass if if if, if Douglas is going to control his posture. Rory Rory can 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 pass his guard. He can do all sorts of different guard passes, but I think he needs to, to just posture up and ground and pound Douglas Lima. That's what I think he needs to do. If he which tries is to smart, stand, which is smart, but I just I'm not sure I'm not sure it's going to happen. If he tries to stand and box with them, that's 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 Douglas Lima has the best chance of winning if they kickbox. If they go to the ground, Roy McDonald has the best chance of winning. He can win standing up. He can. But Douglas Lima has the best chance of winning on the feet. So Roy needs to take it to the mat. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll That's definitely see. Um, analysis. No, it's a great analysis, man. Really on point. <clears throat> That's what I do. Uh, and then I yeah. pick the wrong fucking guy all the time and don't win <laughs> the league. Well, in the main event is... Uh, the start of the, at least in my mind, highly anticipated because I'm looking so uh, forward to this whole thing. The oh, Bellator yeah, Heavyweight sure. Grand Prix. There, Scott Cook are doing something the right way. That's right. We got a we got a Rampage Jackson, Quentin Rampage Jackson, Chell Son, and we got Frank Mir versus uh versus Fedor Emelianenko, a dream fight to a lot of people from way back when. Oh, yeah. King Mo, Muhammad Lawal versus dream. Ryan Bader, their current uh, light heavyweight champion. With um, yeah. Matt Mitrione and Roy Nelson, which I'm surprised they matched them up in the beginning. Because those are the two favorites in my mind to win the thing. Yeah. And so, but they're starting off with Rampage and Chell Sonnen. Chell Sonnen is a middleweight. Yeah. Fighting at <laughs> heavyweight now. Heavyweight. Against what is Rampage, who the is a light way? heavyweight and is now a very fat heavyweight. <laughs> Dude, I saw some training videos of Rampage, man. He looks like he's a good 230. And for him, of late, he, he looks fit, man. I'm picking for him. You're picking Chael via dry hump? Yes, sir. I don't think Rampage's takedown defense stands. And the last thing to go as you get older is your power. But one of the first things to go is your timing. Um, Chell still has better timing on his entries, and I think he will get Rampage down, and he will beat Rampage via dry hump. 
Yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna decision him. It's gonna be a chill son and three round decision. If it was anything more yeah. than three rounds, then yeah, we could we could be talking about something else. But I think I well, think Chael Sonnen wins this fight. If it's a five round fight, I would still favor Chael. It's it'll, it would be really 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 ugly. Four and five would be really really dry humpy, but it'd be really wet because it'd be old sweaty guys at that point. But <laughs> you know, it, it it the thing is is you know what I'm you know what, I'm not giving Chael the credit that he's due. It, he's gonna do more than he's gonna do more than lay on him. He does have a good ground and pound. He does have a good solid base. He does throw a decent amount of strikes. Rampage isn't going to control his posture. You know, he's he's, he's going to let him get up. And I think, I think if Chael can, you know, get up on his toes or on his knees, he, he'll, he'll drop decent punches. Not a lot of elbows. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll cut Rampage. But I, I love Rampage, man. The old Rampage for the Pride days. There's nothing like watching him fight. There's nothing like watching that man. Oh, fight. I agree. Um, I think. I think at this point with these two men in their career, who really wants this win more? I, I think, think Chell Chell does. This, yeah, I think Chell wants this win more. And when he when he does get this win, I can't wait to listen to his uh, his podcast. Hear him talking about it. God, he's so he's he's who I aspire to be when it comes to uh, speaking. So really, oh you got yeah, a lot of fucking work, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Um, on the do. same Most side as the Rampage Chelsea and Bracket, though, we got Fedor and Frank Mir. I was going to say, who who does the winner of this fight get? They get Fedor and Mir? Yeah, winner of Fedor and Mir, which I have Frank Mir winning that fight. I have Frank Mir winning that fight, and I have we will, Frank We will go into Mir. a more in-depth preview for that when, uh, yeah. when that fight comes in. But we're just well, basically going to predict can't the fight Bracket here. April. Frank yeah. can't fight until April, right? So I think something like that. Suspension. Yeah. On the other side of the bracket of the Grand Prix, Matt Mitrione, Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson beat Matt Mitrione in the UFC by knockout. Yeah, he did. It doesn't happen again, in my mind. I think Matt Mitrione takes that fight. I think Matt Mitrione uh, doesn't knock him out, but pieces him up. Yeah, for three rounds. Well, outboxes decision. him. Outboxes him. Yeah. yeah. And then we got Ryan Bader, the current Bellator light heavyweight champion, taking on King Mo. Before Mom we get the into wall. this fight. Do, do you know, does Bellator have a, a large and a small cage? It, it's a smaller cage than the UFC. Because that was one of the things that even Matt harkened back to about how, why he lost to Roy. Because he does use a lot of movement, especially for a heavyweight. And that cage was cutting him off because it was a smaller cage. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. That's why I wanted that to bring that up. That Bellator is a bit smaller. It's not, it's not as small as the small UFC cage. It's like in the middle. But that's, you know, you got to take that into account. If Matt's going to say that's one of the reasons why he got KO'd, well, this cage is a bit small. It doesn't have any kind of corners. It's round, but it's still going to cut you off. I still take him to win the fight, but I'm just saying it might make it a little bit different than you would think. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, well, then we got Ryan Bader, Muhammad Lawal, like we were saying. We we just talked about that. I'm lost. Woo! <laughs> Well, Jesus, Muhammad I got Bader Wall, winning that Bader. fight. So. Yeah, they're, they're they're both light heavies, and if yeah. they fought at light heavy, uh, Ryan Bader beats the wall. Uh, he out wrestles him. I think he I Agreed. think he out wrestles the hell out of him at heavyweight. He still I think the wall has a better yeah. I think the wall has has a better chance so. at heavyweight. I think he at his natural weight without cutting weight he fights better, but um, I don't think he's going to out wrestle Bader. Yeah. I, I I don't think he does either. So that puts our semifinals at uh, Chell Sonnen versus Frank Mir. Yeah. Matt Mitrione versus Ryan Bader. So Chell Sonnen, Frank Mir. Frank I got Mir. Mir. <laughs> I got I got Mir ver, via first round smash. He's gonna he'll, he's gonna ground and pound. Uh, he's gonna submit him. I got I got Mir by submission. Yeah. And it then, wouldn't surprise me, obviously, but. And then on the other side, we got. Since we're obviously on the same page here, we got Mitrion versus Bader. I think Bader gr- uh, grinds him out again. Another grind. Robert, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I, I, I think I lost you for a second. You oh said man, that, we're uh, here. No, I uh, I said on the other side we got it. We're gonna have Mitrion versus Bader, and I got I got Bader winning by a grind. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a tough one for me. I can see it happening all day long. Um, Mitrione's defensive wrestling is pretty good. He's bigger 
but he's a lot slower. Um, I have to make a call. I'll, I'm going to take Bader um, via third round decision. It, it's close in the first. Second is is Bader. Third round is all Bader. I think he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna outpace him and ask him to slow down Mitchell. You're going Mitchell, to brag like stamina. a motherfucker if that's exactly how it happens. It's gonna what drag? <laughs> I'm saying you're gonna brag like a motherfucker if that's exactly what happens. It's likely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. So then we're yeah, setting up for Amir opinion. versus a Bader finale, and I'm gonna stick with my original pick for this whole thing, and that's Ryan Bader. I think if it goes Mir versus Bader, it's going to be competitive um, because Mir is going to get taken down and he's going to get smashed, but he's he's going to not going to, he's been hit a lot harder, but Mir's chin has been tested of late. But uh, Bader doesn't TKO him. He, he, he grinds out a third-round decision, I, I believe a more decisive one against Mir than he did against uh, our boy Mitrione. Yeah, I agree, especially because Mir's uh, chin is pretty shot, so... Yeah, and it's five rounds and, and five round pace. But see, this yeah. is this is it. This is you think about it. Okay, well, you know, Bader's a smaller guy. He can go that five round pace more, but he can go that five round pace more against other smaller guys. Mir is a fucking. He cuts weight to get to one or two sixty five. He cuts weight. Mir's a big fucking dude. So what is that gonna play on on Bader, who's gonna walk in at two thirty, two thirty five maybe? Yeah, like he's which, have, is he's what, which is funny, which is what Mir different. used to weigh before the Brock yeah, Lesnar loss. Shit. Back when he was the shit. Yeah, back before he gained all that weight to try to compete with Brock Lesnar. Yeah. What's, what is what is that going to do to the stamina of somebody like Bader? Again, Bader has great stamina. That guy never slows down. He's fucking great 205 stamina. But what what is it going to do for him to be picking up and slamming down and controlling a 275, a 280-pound man? What's yeah. that going to do to his cardio? Is it going to turn That's to lay him away in rounds four and five? I don't know. Because Mitrione is going to be a three-round fight. It's not for a belt. It's the main event, but it's not for a belt. It's a three-round fight. He can handle that all day long. Uh, no, I agree. I'm I'm totally with you on that. Yep, that, that's what I'm saying. Well, that concludes our uh, Bellator Heavyweight uh, Grand Prix prediction. Ooh, yeah. And probably one of our worst episodes ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will stand by it. Our worst episode ever was our most listened to episode ever. Oh, God, that's Connor Mayweather. I still haven't voice. finished that episode. I probably hey, never just, will. Just to get listeners, just hashtag it to Floyd Mayweather. Conor yeah. McGregor. Yeah, right. Maybe not, not this episode. Maybe not the next episode. one. Maybe, Maybe the next one we do well. And the next one when we're <laughs> live again and live our mics cool. are up at the right level. Yeah, right. So we're not sounding like shit. Um, cool. All right. Well, fuck, man. I guess we'll see everybody next uh, next week when we uh, yep. dissect UFC 220 and not Bellator because we won't be watching that until the next day. Are you so. sure about that? Well, maybe we might watch it right afterwards. Go back and forth or something. Pause each one. We could probably we could probably do that. We'll see. We'll see when we the time comes. Manage that. You know, Bed Bath Beyond. I don't, I don't know if we'll have enough God, time. I don't want to. I don't want to miss this Roy McDonald fight. I don't want to accidentally read about it on social media. I, no, I, I agree. Maybe we'll just watch it. Maybe we'll just watch it right after the pay per view, and then we'll record. I'm, yeah. I'm coming down. I'll, I'll be there right after work. So uh, you, need, you need to take a nap in the guest room. I probably will take a nap. All right, you got it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, social media, buddy. So, you want to get a hold of me on Twitter? It is Joe Hud forty five on Twitter. To get a hold of me on Instagram, it will be MMA to the Max Joe. And as always, the two is the number two. Robert. Find me on Twitter at It's Rock Robster. Find me on Instagram at MMA to the Max Rob. As always, it's the number two. Find uh, our show's page, our show's page, our show's Twitter on Twitter at MMA to the Max Show. <laughs> find it on Facebook.com forward slash MMA to the Max Podcast. As always, find our shows wherever you can download any podcast, including Spreaker, Google Play, iTunes, uh, Podcast Addict, uh, iHeartRadio, all that good stuff. 
as always, find us on our parent website of W2Mnet.com. That is W2Mnet.com, where you can find all your needs for movies, video games, football, MMA, that's us, and all types of sports and entertainment. Fantastic website. Check it out, definitely. And, uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, for supporting us. We're uh, we're going to apologize about this show again, or at least I am. (laughs) I think our I think our hardcore fan would enjoy it because yeah. that's why they enjoy us because we're just our, such our, our one hardcore bitches. fan. The rest just whenever they want. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I thought you guys were our friend. Go fuck yourselves. Yeah, no, no shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! All right, so aggressive. All right, buddy. All right, we we need we need to end this before it gets worse. It could. It it, it I'm sure it could. So, uh, <laughs> on that note, everybody. Make sure you watch UFC uh, Fight Night, I believe, 129 tomorrow night on Sunday. Duho Choi, Jeremy Stevens. Check it out. Make sure you watch 220 next Saturday as well as Bellator 192. For my co-host, Joseph Hudson, a.k.a. Riverside Joe, I am Robert Taylor. This has been MMA to the Max. We will see you next week. Take care. See ya. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.